growing your business in 2020 um, through online. Um, and Figo um, are excited to talk about the different things around how an online presence can grow and drive your business pop, um, forward. We're excited, we're passionate, and we really want to come up with some exciting ways and some different things of how to move your business forward. So today, I wanna to be open. What are you gonna get out of the session? What are you gonna learn and how can we help? We want to give you a greater understanding of how web to print can grow and drive your business forward. Learn how partnering with Infiga software will give you some really good, exciting information and a perfect partner in this area. Learn how to consume more orders online, how to automate, integrate, and drive that through personalization. And anybody that's already using existing web to print can also find out what exciting tools are available and how with a better managed solution, we can help drive your business. And also at the end, we're gonna share some exciting content and a fantastic offer when we're done to really drive your business and this opportunity forward into 2020. Let's go into 2020 with some exciting tools and let's finish it with a bang. So who am I? Well, I've had a few years in this, um, this world, um, always been involved in technology, um, variable data, um, personalization, um, software solutions, and the lovely print itself. There isn't a restaurant I don't go in that I don't pick up and have a quick look at either how the label was printed on the bottle, how the menu is created, what type of lamination. I'm just that sort of geek. So I'll apologize for that now, um, but I've got reasonable um, knowledge within this space. And I'd like to share some of my knowledge and exciting anecdotal ideas about how online presence can really um, change your business. We started the business in 2010, and really that was about frustration about how there was a lot of systems out there a lot of different technology that were very functional, but weren't that easy to use, easy to manage, easy to set up, and just really needed to be look better, feel better, um, really drive that nice experience for you and your clients. Everybody in the business in Figo, including myself, as you can hear, were very, very passionate about print, and not just about print, but successful print where we're actually driving our customers forward, we're adding real value, and we're really bringing new businesses forward in the 21st century and beyond. So who are we? Well, in Figo Software, um, over the last um, 10 years, now have three um, different places. Um, our main HQ is in the UK. Um, we also have a technical base in North America where we um, service the clients out there uh, with local time zone support. And we've also got a technical excellence center in Eastern Europe where we've got a, a team of geniuses creating and building um, world-class technology. Um, and we've built a few sites as well. We're probably well over our 2000th site now and really driving all sorts of weird, wonderful, exciting, and profitable solutions across the industry. So what do we do? In essence, we, we provide an online solution. We provide e-commerce that allows people to drive personalization, and drive their business through an online presence. We help businesses meet their objectives through growth, through profitability, um, with not just great solutions, but a great team. Customer success is very important to us, and we've got a great team, not just to give you the best solutions, but help you service them, drive them forward, and really give you some value add for the business. And we've got one of the most amazing software suites that really gives you a massive competitive advantage that we believe and we're told by the clients today um, that is really unrivaled in the marketplace. And you'll find out a little bit more as we 
talk now and as we drive through the um, through the, the, the slideshow. And really, we want to give your business the edge. We want to give your business that power, that energy. And really, what we're finding, um, and to quote um, our, our, our consultant, um, Bern Zipper, um, that online is going to be the source of print in the next 10 years. People will only be looking at that as a way of submitting, managing, and receiving print online. So we need to try and help you with what that future is and that transition. And also how we bring online together as well as personalization. One of the things at the foundation and the heart of our business is really about the customers we work with, the people we employ, and the, par the partners that we, um, well, we work with. And the reason that these things are big drivers for us, our partnerships allow us to go deeper into your businesses, allow us to automate and drive opportunity and jobs through your business with the least amount of touch points possible. When we work with partners, we don't just look do they have the best software? But have they got the right fit for us? Have they got the right team? Are they going to add some value for our clients? And we've found that our best clients that have, have got and using some of our partner softwares really get the best benefit about an online solution. An online solution isn't just about a front end. It's working through the different partners of different technologies that takes the job the client information, the client order from start to finish, from start to delivery, from start to the customer's hand in the least amount of touch points, the least amount of hassle and the quickest and most efficient way for your business. And at Infigo, we really have got some world-class partners. HP are a global partner. We not only partner with those guys, we integrate fully with their software, they provide world-class production management solutions, RIPs, and printing devices. DVR Software, our partner in the US, provides some amazing and very highly technical professional services um, in the US and beyond. And Focus, one of our pre-flight partners, they've got some brilliant technology that really allows us to reduce the amount of errors handle more files in a faster way, and really speed up that process from order submission to order print from the job. And a number of exciting partners, Print IQ, Tharston, who work and manage and better serve your business from a management perspective. And some other partners such as DScoop, Two Sides, FTA, that provide knowledge and information within the industry. So I'm going to hit you with a little poll. Which integration, what, what is really important about using web to print within your business? Are you using web to print? Thirty seconds remaining. If you could pop in your information, guys. Some interesting feedback here. So please, everybody in there, just last bit. We're just about to close up the poll. There's a few more that haven't answered. That would be great if you could just get your feedback and really help make this topic a great success. So, wow. So only 50% of everybody in the poll so far is actually using a web to print. So 
there's two questions here. One, the 50 that are, well done, congratulations, and I hope you're getting the best of that, and the other 50 are not. What are the barriers? What are the reasons for not taking um, that step yet? Maybe it's information. Maybe it's internal knowledge. Maybe it's the, the risk of the investment. Am I going to get something back? Let's talk about that and see how we can um, drive this forward. So for those that are using web to print I'm sure some of these things will really resonate. And for those that are not, what is web to print How can it help my business? web to print really will expand your business online and will really drive what we call a business to business and a business consumer opportunity. It's not just the storefront. The amount of conversations I have with clients that say, oh, I'm interested in web to print oh, I want to be able to do it, but it's just a storefront. It's not going to add any value to my business. It's so wrong. Really a, a storefront, a web to print service, whether it be B2B or B2C, is a better way of communicating with your clients. It doesn't stop you communicating with your clients, it improves the communication. You can still pick up the phone, you can still have a conversation, but you're using a portal, a central way of keeping that information together. And when the silly updates, such as packings going out the door or the prediction, the print run is finished, then you can automatically get that communication to your customer. And a world of where we're living with Uber and Airbnb and we're getting instant updates, that is the expectation of your customers today. So it's not just a storefront. And it's not market specific. A lot of customers say, well, I don't do business cards, so I can't look at a web to print solution. If I look at across the thousands of sites that we deliver today, it's really about wide format. It's about packaging. It's about um, exhibition um, stands. It's about labels. It's about an absolute mass of different applications. And it doesn't have to be print. We've got customers that use it to drive engraving devices. We've got customers using it as a way of generating content. There is a real mass of market sectors, of product types, and it doesn't have to be about templated work. I'm amazed that when we go in and have discussions with customers, they think, well, not all of my work can be templated, so why should I use a web to print service? Let's use an upload functionality. Let's use an upload with a pre-flight, so it allows your job customers to submit easier. It could be driving a live price. We could be linking to your management information system, driving a live price, getting the job into your um, business quicker while reducing the errors. I think an important thing to think as well is you've got different customers that will work in different way. So a storefront doesn't have to be that single solution. It's not a one size fits all. And the one of the powers of web to print should be that you can tailor your storefronts, your portals, your online solution for different clients. And that really, if your solution isn't giving you that, then you need to look at your solution. And you need to be able to deliver a service these days. No longer can you say to a client, well, sorry, I'm closed. Could you send me that job in the morning? I'll pick up an email. Some customers expect 24 seven because their lifestyles are now demanding and driving that. So we see a lot with our customers that jobs are being driven from at seven o'clock in the evening or eight o'clock in the evening. They've put the kids to bed, they've had some dinner. They now want to get their print jobs for the next day or the meeting in, on Monday. That isn't happening in a nine to five world. So how are you able to be able to accept those jobs? How are you able to respond? Yes, oh, well, we can take an email. Well, an email's not gonna give a price. An email's not gonna check if the files are correct. So really, it's giving a, 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 a front a way for your customers to better manage, better communicate, and better get that information from you. And the, the world of Uberization, we can't ignore being able to give the tools, the feedback, the information in an instant way to our clients. 
And also it's about increasing revenue streams. The amount of our customers now that have been using it for B2B, simple stock management, doesn't have to be even customized or personalized. They have got a way, they've got 100 inventory items um, with their clients. They've got 100 inventory items, they manage that day to day, and they say to me, Doug, oh, wouldn't it be great if I could just have a simple way of getting the artwork sent to me? And I'm like, well, let's put a storefront up that allows customers just sim a simple upload. Give them an option, eight and a half, 11 paper. You can have different media types and all sorts and a really simple ways of selecting different options. And the important thing is, it's not just giving your customers opportunity. It's not just providing a bit better service, but it makes them sticky. It really important thing. I speak to clients, how do I retain clients? How do I make them stickier? Well, if you can improve the process, if you can give them a better offering, you've now got more time to be able to have better conversations, add better value to your clients, they're going to be happier. Your customer retention is going to go through the roof. Web to print is not just a storefront. It adds so many more important things to your business. So why is web to print explored? Well, I'm seeing all different trends, information. Um, digital print is exploding. The quality of the devices. There's not a news article in the press today. It doesn't matter whether we're talking large format, direct to object printing, 3D printing, wide format. If we're looking at small format, there's a new device coming out. So if we're gonna have all these digital devices, we're going to have all this new volume. We're going to have more jobs. We're going to have more quotes to do. We're going to have more back and forth for the clients. The list goes on. How are you going to handle all of that information? Well, if we can provide an efficient way of being able to handle that information, an efficient way of being able to centralize that information, get instant updates to your clients, then you're really going to have a lot of power. It's great that the volumes are going up. It's great that we're driving things forward. And really we need to make sure that we've got the tools, the software, the systems in place, the integrations in place to make sure we can handle all this new volume and this new opportunity. But it's not just about the web to print. It's not just about the solution from that simple storefront. It's being able to provide some of your bigger customers that may be ordering across the globe. Think global, act local strategy. We need to make sure that what we're giving our customers is really easy to use. It's tailored exactly to what they need and it's on brand and on point for their design and their requirements. We need to make sure that what we're looking at is trackable. Are we giving them the right information? Are the right users logging in? Are we giving them the right information to be able to use the system easily? And what, what we're also seeing is that when we drive some of this technology, not only are we providing a portal, we could be um, driving some personalization within that, but we're going to get more opportunity, more uniqueness, more one-to-one -one personalization with that client. And the exciting thing is, is not only can we give these, um, these vast selection of tools and opportunities, but we've got a host of design tools that actually the customers can manage their artwork online as well. They want to make simple changes, simple edits, or lots of changes and lots of edits. Where well, you have the tools and make sure you have the tools to be able to do that within your solution. And Probably the one most important thing that I drive home to my clients is don't just build a site, don't just build an online portal and leave it and seeing if your customers are using it. You've got to see how often they use it. What are the most common products? You've got to be able to merchandise. You've got to be able to drive, analyze and make sure and talk to your customers. Hey guys, how are you doing? How are you getting on with the online solution we're providing? I hate it. I don't want to use it. You've got to be able to analyze, track, report, make sure that what you're giving your customers is adding them real benefit. There's a, there should never be an assumption just because it's an online portal, it's easy to use. 
that they're using it. You might have to tailor it. You might have to give them a bit more education, build an online video and things like that. And that's really important. Give them the tools, make sure they're using the tools, review that and continually drive that forward on an ongoing basis. The amount of customers say, oh, oh yeah, we built an online solution for one customer. When's the last time you reviewed it? It was probably 10 years ago, five years ago. You need to make sure that you're driving and using and continually optimizing the software, the tools that you're giving your customers. So we've got another poll. So what we'd like to do is find out which features of those 50% of guys that are using web to print which ones are really important about the, which features are really important about the solution. Thanks guys. I hope the speed and time is okay. If you want me to speed up or slow down, ping me a note in the chat. Uh, but I hope you're enjoying everything so far. I know I certainly am. Which features are right for your business? Maybe there's a feature we're not aware of yet. Could be the next feature. I was speaking to a customer the other day about 3D. How can they accept 3D files to drive their 3D printing devices? There's a great question. We have a lovely 3D tool within our system. And we're talking about visualizing a 3D model and being able to visualize products. What features are really important to your business? One that drives my own business forward is analytics. What's profit like? How many sales are we making? Are we spending the money in the right area? And web to print will definitely help you with that information. What's your best spending client? Analytics are really important to my business as I'm sure they are to yours. A few more seconds to complete which features would you like to see? So 70% of you would like to see mar market specific solutions. That's, that's really interesting. Easy to use. Tailored branded storefronts, 85%. Personalization is only 54%. That's really, really interesting. Uh, what we are seeing, having spent 20 odd years in this world and personalization, variable data, depending on what you want to call it, really is the lifeblood of what we can do. We need to make sure that we're pushing that more and I'm gonna come on to that in a few, few minutes. Marketing engagement. Design tools, wow, only 38% of people believe that design tools and excitingly, as, as I would have predicted, analytics, reporting, information back is around just under 46%. Thanks for taking the time there, guys. So I'm sure by now everyone in the world has heard of Amazon. Um, I, I hear they take about a pound of every 10 pound that's spent or something online. It's quite crazy. And the reason I mention this example is not to show a, an absolute Goliath, Goliath of, of the industry. But the point at the bottom here is the amount of people I speak to around online e-commerce, B2C, B2B. Oh, I haven't got a strategy yet, Doug. That ship has sailed. We're, 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 there's no point in doing it now. Everybody's doing web to print. The reality is, and it was an interesting stat that I heard at a conference the other day, that then this was in 2019, this, this, um, the, the 14%. It's set to double the amount of people that are spending online. There is plenty of space to drive success and drive opportunity. And as I mentioned earlier on, and we'll share in some of our future communication, 
there is real ways of you being able to capitalize and drive opportunity online. And we can't ignore it. It doesn't have to be an Infigo solution. It could be your own custom built one. It could be one of our lovely competitors and things like that. But you have to be looking at how an online place, how are you positioning your business to be able to consume print online? So great, we're providing customers with an amazing pro portals. We're giving them a tailored solution. It's on brand, it's on point, the jobs are flying in, but we need to make sure that we're driving that automation. Because automation does a number of things in the business. It reduces errors, it reduces problems, it increases throughput and allows you to take many more things. And the important thing is, as we start to take on different style of jobs, and we'll all admit with the area of digital print that's not going away, um, and even some customers are using lithographic printing and stuff like that, they're taking on more orders. That's more quotes, that's more information. We need to make sure that we're automating, not just automation from, oh, well, it goes to a hot folder. We need to make sure that information is going into our MIS system. We need to make sure that information is going out to our purchase order system. That information is being fed in to our accounting system. And then maybe it might be CRM. There's many different ways for automation and driving that success. One of our best clients is completely automated. From the point of submission, um, submitting a job from their customer, and there is no point within the business that the job is touched until it physically goes out and gets cut after it's printed. That part is important because not only does it allow you to do all the things I'm talking around, it drives profitability in the business. And as we all know in the world and the craziness that we're faced with, um, profitability has been cut at every way. So if we can drive an extra one or two percent back to the bottom line. Everybody, especially me, is gonna be really, really happy. So we've got this brilliant storefront. We're now automating. We've got the jobs flowing through the business. We need to make sure that our integration is working. And one of the things that we did around a year ago was work with Focus, a fantastic partner, and they have some great tools called them Focus and Pit Stop. We integrate their server product into our product. And what we do with them is I look at in like automation and integration in a couple of different ways. Everybody talks about automation as of something that happens in the background. Well, actually, the important thing with automation and integration is actually you're getting the problems, the issues as upfront and as early to the client as, as possible. So with pit stop and pre-flighting, we actually, point of order submission, we recommend that you actually give some notice to customers if the fonts are wrong, if the problem with the job, if they've selected the correct page size, the correct orientation, have they got the correct media for the right jobs and so on. And you need to make sure that automation and integration is done as early in the process so we can make sure that we're reducing those errors and we're getting that job through quicker. As soon as you have to talk to that client about a silly issue of the job, then it's gonna cost you more money. And in some cases, more money than the actual job is gonna drive in. We do a lot of integration with book pricing and inventory management systems. So making sure when things are ordered that they automatically flow through into the different systems. And then making sure from a marketing and sales perspective that we're linking into your analytics tools, we're driving into your CRM systems and so forth. And that's really important because we want to be able to measure what people are ordering, why they're not ordering certain products and so on. And one of the things, I think it's 80% of products on an online store don't get ordered. So you need to be able to make sure that you're merchandising that and one way of doing that is feeding your information into your CRM system, your sales management tools, to make sure that you're merchandising and you're creating the right information. 
Integration is so important. So a question for you guys, which integration is really important to your business? Some awesome things coming back here. I really appreciate the interaction. The success of me doing these webinars is really working together with you guys. So a few more minutes. about closing off guys so mis and prediction production print workflow is absolutely on the money there closely followed by pre-flighting and crm and some others that will feed back later what's really interesting and um, from my point of view is um thinking about that pre-flight is only around 50% of people's important. What we really want to do and need to think about is making sure that we are getting the jobs into our system. It's great that we've integrated our workflows and our MIS system and our information, but if we're not getting the jobs into our system in the correct way, in the fastest way, then that's gonna be a big problem down the line. And one of the things that we actually and do as part of our integrations um, is three-step process. We automate, we check the job. Is the job correct? Is it in the right format? Two, we um, fix, we apply a fix. We say, right, this should be RGB, but it's CMYK, or it should be CMYK, we need it in RGB and so on and so forth. We can apply a fix. And then the third thing that we can do with our profiles and our pre-flighting is once the jobs come together, it might be an imposition or something like that. Is, does it look correct? Is it all the right pagination, that information? Are we pulling a barcode from a third party system? Are we getting some other data that we then apply to the job, whether it be in the job or, or for information? So I think we really need to be thinking more around the pre-flighting and great feedback on the production work, workflow and MIS systems. This is brilliant, guys. So one of the things, and I, I, the reason I bring it up in the, in the, the webinar, although we're talking about um, going online and things like that, what we are seeing now, personalization has been one of my sort of pet loves forever. It drives value. We're constantly trying to drive value to our customers. We want to add something that is really powerful and there's enough stats around the world that shows that personalization and one of the great things if you've got the right web to print system is you can drive personalization and what does that mean well it doesn't just mean um, putting a name on something it could be driving the correct content the right imagery it could be personalization from a localization point of view if you've got different sectors different languages it really is adding power and value to a job. That uniqueness and ultimately will drive more engagement with your client. And once again, if you're talking to your client, you're interacting with your client from that point of view, you can put all of this information online. They can order one 
excuse me, once it's done. But you're going to give them a better ROI for what they're doing. Uploading data lists. If you're doing things like loyalty cards or something like that, you can put online, you can drive the information, you can personalize the content, the back of the, the, the design or so on and so forth. But really, you should be thinking about personalization and how that fits in with your online portal. And what we're seeing as well is personalization takes a typical, a typical service-driven industry such as print and productizes it. Allows you to create your own products and put them online. We can add content reviews to the personalization workflows. You need to think about these things. If people are personalizing, how is your system? How would you manage that? Is that person that's driving that personalization allowed to add what they're adding? So you need to make sure that your solutions, your tools are allowing you to be able to check that, automate that, drive approvals, and so on and so forth. So it's really, really important that you think about how the impact of personalization is driving through your site. We've got customers now um, looking for quite a real broad selection of personalization. We've got customers who are doing um, point of sale and they personalize what size the poster is to which shop. It could be which color of the content based on which brand it's going out. We've got a, a client in the UK, one of the largest utilities companies, we're handling hundreds of thousands of orders every day, and they've got five or six different brands. Based on who logs in, chooses which personalization, chooses which content, it signs them off at the bottom. So it really is thinking about how personalization can impact your online storefront. And we 100% see the clients that are adding that personalization, once again, that stickiness, that driver, and if you're building that personalization within your online portal, then you can hold on to the customers a bit longer. So you need to make sure that it's part of your content, part of your um, system and so on. So <clears throat> a couple of reviews there really to think about. Where to print is not just a storefront. There's lots of different things that it can drive. It's tailored to your clients and should be tailored to your clients. It offers new opportunities to go and sell, manage and drive relationship with your customers. Drive new revenue areas. Help compete with those customers that may be going online or maybe not. There's some real exciting opportunities. You need to make sure that you're driving and analyzing what your customers are ordering. Whether it be B2B or B2C, you need to make sure that your analytics, when are people logging in? Are you putting the right information? Can they use the system easily? And also really, really important as we've talked many times, automation and integration with the systems that you have. If you have a web to print solution now, and it's a standalone solution, think about how much better what the drivers would be, what the benefit would be if it was integrated to your other systems within the business. So hopefully that's given you some exciting information. Um, one of the things I'd like to um, kick off in a second is just um, any questions. So we've got about a few minutes and I'll open out. If you want to put your hands up then and, and ask any questions, we'll run through a few of those questions. So just answering a couple of questions here. Um, why should you push personalization online rather than using an offline tool? Well, I think it goes back to the importance of, and I've used a number of the tools out there 
to be able to drive offline personalization. The benefit of mixing both web to print and personalization together is it's giving a little bit of hands-off approach. So once you've built the campaign, once you've set that up, you can actually drive that from your online store, making sure that the right information is gathered and re not requiring back and forth with, with your customers. Another interesting question here, should I use different branding, different color customers, or just a single storefront for my clients? Well, it's a, something that we get asked all the time and something that um, I, my personal view is, and what I suggest to our customers, is you have a standard storefront, a portal that handles your um, generic, more simplistic customers that maybe don't order all the time because you're getting the benefits and you're driving the power online. And also, you have a look at your bigger customers are adding a little bit more value. You'll build a more personalized view for them. You'll drive more options and um, you'll give them a better way of being able to interact with you um, and so on and so forth. So there's another question here. Yeah, about touch points. Do you think there's a benefit of driving touch points in the in the business? Well, one of the things <laughs> and we all do it is oh great there. Can I email you this artwork? Can I send you this job? We I think it, it actually I think it's something like three quarters of the workflow can be removed by pushing these jobs online. Over 20 touch points typically within a um, job when you're ordering it through print. Um, and through email or, or, or FTP. And we can drive that to around five to seven touch points, depending on the complexity within, within the job. What time for one more question, guys? So Anita, have you got a question you can shout out? Maybe you've got your mic switched on. Well, we can grab it after Anita. Thanks for, thanks for mentioning. Well guys, um, I'd just like to say a massive thanks to everybody um, that took part today. Um, really pleased to be able to talk and share some of my knowledge about driving things online um, and post this um, discussion today, we'd like to continue the dialogue. So a couple of things, we're gonna be um, sending out um, some content. So if you, we'll, we'll ping you an email and let us know. We've got some lovely content being driven out with some of our partners, but also we'd like to give you, and it's a matter if you looking at Figo or thinking about the thing, but if you're thinking about online, if you've got some challenges, you've got some questions, we'd like to offer an online health check. We'll spend time with one of my consultants, half an hour to an hour. We can talk through some of your ideas. We'll create a little report for you and be able to send that back through. So if you'd like to be able to take advantage of that very exciting offer, um, no charge, <laughs> no catches, ping us an email um, at webinar and figuresoftware.com and my team will be more than happy to run through that, as will I, if there's any questions. So I really hope in 2020, it's a year of growth for your business. And by growth, I don't mean in the typical print world, just about revenue, because let's make sure we think about profitability. Let's not just grow your business in size, but let's grow your business in profitability. So I'd like to thank you very much for your time. And any questions that, hasn't, that haven't been picked up today will be um, answered um, offline. Thank you very much, guys, and take, take care.